Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Third Planet Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I am joined by the ever-awesome Joseph Thomas. How's it going? (laughs) It has been a couple months since we've recorded an episode. Uh, All those Mortal Kombat videos and everything that we did kind of burned us out, so we took a longer break than I had anticipated, but we're back. And uh, today we're going to be talking about... We're actually going to be discussing whether or not the MCU phase one still holds up, Mm -hmm. uh, especially with all the new stuff that Marvel's doing. And at the time of recording this and at the time that this is coming out, uh, the new black widow movie will be being released at the end of the week. So Uh, it's like the best film that probably should have came out like seven years ago. (laughs) I know. It's just like, I don't even know why they're doing this at this point. And it's just like, (laughs) you know, spoiler alert. I thought they did her kind of dirty in end (laughs) game. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, but we'll see how it goes this week. Yeah, you know, I I always thought that she deserved her own movie like way before before Captain Marvel. That's for sure. Um, that's just because I, I'm not a big Brie Larson fan, but yeah, who is nowadays? Honestly, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I always like Black Widow. I always thought that they did a really good job with her. I, you know, she's a really really interesting character, but. Uh, definitely the best part of iron man 2 <laughs> yeah we're gonna get to iron man 2 but uh you know at the today at the time of recording this uh richard donner had uh, has passed on he uh mm-hmm. if you don't know who he is he uh directed the first superman movie he directed part of the second superman movie which was then recut uh into another movie but later re-released as the richard donner cut which is a completely different movie something that we should really talk about here on a uh, third planet from the black hole and uh, he also directed the Lethal Weapon movies, Omen, a lot of great movies under his belt. I never thought that he got the credit he deserved for a lot of, you know, his contributions to film. And he passed away today at the age of 91. And I just wanted to, uh, you know, give him a shout out for his impact on the superhero genre with, mm. when it comes to film. Yeah, I, 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 get, I, as I never got a chance to check out like much of a Superman work, but definitely like the, the Lethal Weapon films when I was a kid, I definitely watched those plenty of times. <laughs> they, they're fun movies. I, I love those yeah. Lethal Weapon movies. Um, yeah, my grandparents just had like the, I think, I think they had like a box set. With th- the old VHS the box set with the cardboard around it and everything. Yeah, I just, and, yep, and I would just watch those on repeat. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're fun movies. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I w- really without him, you wouldn't have the MCU, uh, really, because he defined the modern superhero movie with uh, Superman the movie. So, so yeah, the, the old Superman movies are definitely something I need to go back and check out because I'm not the most experienced when it comes to the, it's just the super, uh, Superman lore or films or comics or anything like that. But yeah, but I'd definitely like to go check it out now since he's kind of now a topic of discussion it'd be interesting to go back and check out some of his work yeah i i definitely think that they the first one especially really still holds up um but uh, before we go off on a superman tangent because everybody knows i'm a superman that case uh mm-hmm. we uh will move on to the topic of discussion today which is uh does the phase one of the mcu still hold up and uh i guess we could start with the first iron man movie you know what what did you think, Joseph, when it first got announced or when it was coming out? When did you see it? You know, did you even know that they were going to go with the whole uh, shared universe thing? Or uh, I th- so the first Iron Man came out in two thousand eight, correct? Two thousand eight. It came out the same summer as The Dark Knight. A lot of people forget that they were only a couple months apart. I think. Yeah, that's a, yeah, no, yeah, that is true. I, at the time, I wasn't I wasn't all that aware of what the plans were for this for them creating the Marvel Cinematic Universe or any of that. Like, I just knew that Iron Man was a, was a new Marvel film. That's basically, that's honestly all I knew. And I knew about Robert Downey Jr. as an actor from watching him in like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is also a movie I was a big fan of when I was younger. So, and Iron Man is what is one of the films in the phase one that I still does, that still does hold up very well for me and i and i just rewatched it pretty recently like about a month ago and I, robert down jr is as charismatic as ever yeah it's like it's and it's just it's just such it's such a strong start to his character in my opinion 
Yeah, I I agree. This out of all the MCU films or the phase one MCU films, I think that this is definitely the best. Like I can go back and watch this movie, no problem and still enjoy it. And it's a, uh, it's really well written. It's John Favreau is an excellent director and writer. Like he yeah. is great. Put him on it. Like just, I want him to control everything now. Cause like, you know, what his work with star Wars, his work with Marvel and everything. Like he's a really great writer and a director. And I think that that, really helped this movie and i i didn't even know who really who iron man was uh when this movie was coming out yeah because i was all i was all over the dark knight because the dark knight came out that summer i was all about that movie Mm -hmm. and then i recognized i was like oh iron man you know he usually sometimes he shows up in like the spider-man cartoons that we would watch when we were younger or you know sometimes he shows up with captain america and a con and a comic that i'd be reading like you know x-men or or what am I talking about? I never, I never read X Men, but like, you know, Spider again, Spider Man, like that. Spider Man was always my gateway to the to the rest of the Marvel universe. But you know, he wasn't. He's definitely a C list character in terms of like the rest of the characters at the time that were popular. But and I didn't know who Robert Downey Jr. was, but I, uh, you know, I went into it not expecting much, and I just remember really, really enjoying it. Like I just. I didn't even pick up on the, I, I didn't know there was an after credit scene in this movie. I didn't know till like years later that they, uh, that, you know, Nick Fury was at the end talking about the Avengers. I missed the, that Phil Coulson was a member of shield. I missed a lot of that stuff in the, in the movie. And I actually didn't find out that they were doing a shared universe until the next movie, which we'll get to. Um, but yeah, I, I still really think this movie's great. Like Jeff Bridges is, awesome yeah. in this movie yeah. so like so yeah i used to, like when I, when I hadn't watched the film in quite a while i used to think that for some reason i remember the villain just kind of being forgettable but even though i thought it was a very strong movie but then but then like i realized the villain was jeff bridges and i was like no he's very good yeah like, like, and, like and and for me like for me tony tony stark in terms of the mcu is my favorite character he it, he is the heart of the entire series for me and that I, this first film right away establishes establishes all, all the heart that he provides as a, as a character right it's like when especially during this during the scenes where he he's building the suit and i forget i forget the guy's name that he, he's that he's working with that ends up sacrificing himself to help oh yeah Tony's yeah I, I forget it too but like yeah. But like immediately, like they establish such good chemistry, and like, and you, you just like, I don't know, like that because that, that's the first time he goes from just being like the playboy character to like the the more the more the more genuine, caring kind of character that he becomes throughout the series. And like, yeah, his yeah his character is just so well presented right away. Yeah, and, and it's so he, and it remains consistent throughout all the films. No matter no matter whether the film is good good great we, he, his characters most, great. him and Cap I think are the most consistent characters in the MCU him Cap and, and Black Widow right um you know and if Jeff back to Jeff Bridges he is intimidating there are scenes in the movie like I didn't like it when he actually became the Iron Monger and was up screaming and you know throwing yeah. cars around but when he's just Jeff Bridges he's so intimidating to be around and intense I'm just like. Oh, he has a he yeah he had a he has a great presence and, yeah and he, you could definitely yeah he you could definitely f- feel the him trying to intimidate to, intimidate Tony in many scenes of putting his arm around him like Tony Tony yeah he's and that's just Jeff Bridges is a great actor that's why and yeah, we definitely. have to acknowledge the greatest scene ever put to film from the <laughs> MCU which is the Tony Stark mm-hmm. was able to build this in a cave hey. with a box of scraps. I'm sorry, but I'm not Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. The, yeah. the, tie, the tie flip, too. The way he, like, flips his tie up and he's just yelling at the guy. Yep, and the moment, and then the moment that created the callback that broke me in the end game was the, I want an American cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. That, that was, was that was also a great scene. Even what even when I was even when I was younger, because back two thousand eight, I was like, what? If I was fourteen, 
Yeah. Like that, just that, just like that line for some reason. It was like one of the most memorable lines of the whole movie. Like, because that was the class. That's when I was like, this is this is classic Robert Downey Jr. like start like snarky sarcasm. Yeah. Like, like I I loved it. <laughs> and you know, I I do think that they kind of changed Tony Stark a lot <clears throat> to more fit um Robert Downey Jr. a little bit in the movies and in the comics. But really, if you look at the earlier Tony Stark in the in the MCU and then you look at Tony Stark in the comics he's was born to play Robert Downey Jr was born to play that part oh yeah that's I mean, exactly how he is in the comics he's just not great at being an asshole oh yeah and even and even in Robert Downey Jr's previous films like he has that same charismatic kind of like playboyish like that's just, that's just not that's just naturally his go to yeah so, just the, yeah, the casting choice could not have been better. And I don't, I can't think of anybody that could have done it more perfectly. And that's all that's, it's that way with a lot of characters in the MCU. Like that's, if, if there's anything you can say about these films, their casting has been phenomenal. Oh yeah. All the way around. And except for Captain Marvel, I always thought Charlize Theron was always my first choice to play Captain Marvel, but yeah. Um, that what you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, the thing is it's a great story too for robert downey jr because i know that he fell on a lot of hard times with you know drug addiction and everything i think he was working at a pizza parlor when he got the call that he got the part of iron man so this was really his comeback role and i think that's what really brought up a lot of attention to this movie Mm -hmm. you know that it was robert downey jr's comeback role you know and that's what really helped it along yeah, and then, yeah, this was the beginning of him like turning his life around as like as an actor, his whole professional career, and just his whole life, and he's stayed on track ever since, and it's just flourished, and you got to respect that. Oh yeah, and yeah. you know I, yeah, like I th- I think this movie really holds up. I mm-hmm. could go back and watch it right now, and you know still enjoy it, which is something that I can't really say for a lot of the MCU movies. I hate to agree with Martin Scorsese, who's one of my favorite directors. Yeah, but you know they are they are kind of roller coaster movies. You know that you, you do it once and they're great, but you don't really want to go back and watch them. Um, but there's lots of exceptions to that in the MCU, and I think that this is definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah, without without question, this, this is one that works really well just as a solo film by itself. Yeah, and uh, oh, before we move on to, I should let you know too that like uh, the video is going to go. The video of us talking right now is going to go up on YouTube. Okay. You see that? Yeah, I should let you know then in the beginning. Yeah, I figured. Good thing I'm not going to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, anyway, that takes us to the next movie, which is The Incredible Hulk. I have a huge bias towards this movie. <laughs> like, now, I will, I will say, I have not watched this movie since I watched it in theaters when it first came out. Really? You haven't? So, so I would like to hear your thoughts on it because I don't remember much about it. I want. I, I'm one of the people that I watched the 2003 Hulk more times than anybody probably should have because it is a str- it, It's a strange watch, quite frankly, but I loved it as a kid. Okay, so that's the interesting thing about this movie, and you know the, the reason why I'm biased is because like the Hulk is number two on my favorite on my list of favorite superheroes of all time. I love the Hulk. I think he's a great mm-hmm. character. I'm actually not all that satisfied with the way they've treated the hulk in the mcu um but we'll you know we'll get to that you know as as this as this goes on but um so you have to talk about that 2003 hulk movie if you're going to talk about this movie so i think that we should both kind of go uh give our our quick thoughts on that leading up to this because there's actually an interesting story of how we got the incredible hulk from the 2003 hulk okay I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, the 2003 Hulk. I just remember. I don't know how I found. I don't know how I found out about the film because I was in like second or third grade when that film came out. I just, I just remember I was so excited to go see it. I don't know how I heard about it. The same. But I was super excited to go see it. I remember the day. I remember the day I was going to see it. And I loved it as a kid because I loved the violence. I loved the violence of it. I, I like. I loved. There was something. I, I just loved how violent the Hulk was. And then they came out with the. Then they had the the Hulk movie game that came out for PS2. 
I was obsessed with that game as well. And, and just to say, that game still holds up. That's a fun game. It I is, still is, like that game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I said. Yeah, I just remember the opening mission. You're in. The, you're at the gas station, just throwing the soldiers around. Yeah. I, was like, I was just like, "Well, this is the greatest thing I've ever played." Like, I was addicted to it. Yeah, it, it was a great time to be a. It it was a great time to be a Hulk fan during yeah, that kind of mid two thousand early two thousands era for yeah, some I'm, reason. Yeah, I'm not sure what the critical claim is on that film nowadays. I don't know how. What is the genuine? What is the general consensus of that movie now? I really don't know. See, Hulk fans are kind of. There's not that many like huge Hulk fans that I know mm-hmm. of. I think I know like one. Like the Hulk is rarely pops up on anybody's like, you know, huge fan list. Like you know, I just know I, I have one friend that I know really likes the Hulk. He's his favorite superhero, and I know my uncle who loves the Hulk because of the Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno TV show, which I watched before that got me hooked on the Hulk because they were showing that on TV in anticipation for the 2003 movie. So I really liked that. And then because of that show, I went and started reading some of the comics. I read a lot of the Peter David, the, it was whatever my local library had. So I read like the Peter David comics uh, from the eighties, a lot of the old Jack Kirby comics from the sixties. And I really love like, you know, the, you know, what happens when the military starts using science as a weapon and everything like mm-hmm. these great themes and all that. And then I heard that they were making a movie and this was hot off the heels of Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man movie, which I loved. Yeah. So I was just like, wow, they're going to make a Hulk movie now. And of course, in my mind, I'm just like, that means they're going to team up, which never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Because like as as campy as like the uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man films are, they were de- this was definitely a time when superhero movies were taking were they were being created in this realistic, more realistic world and more. Yeah. And more, so just in such in such a more like, I guess. I guess on an adult fashion than like you would see these MCU movies nowadays are. Yeah. So it like, was... so, yeah. So then we get the Hulk. And it's a dark ass movie. It <laughs> is. It is so dark, but it's just. Uh, I hate. I hate. The, okay, I, we're talking a lot about this movie, but like <laughs> this is fun though. Okay, so yeah. it is not even an MCU movie, but I hate that this movie wasted one of the darkest and one of the best hulk stories from the comics and that's the relationship with his father they completely botched it in the movie it made it stupid because i remember when i first saw the movie i was just like because i again i really like the lou ferrigno bill bixby one because it had that kind of you know fugitive man on the run desperate to cure himself themes which were from the comics and i was like okay you're not going to get this in this movie because this is the beginning and at the end they tease that that we're going to get that man on the run thing but what really threw me off was like the design of the Hulk. I was, I was like, he looked like a frat guy in that movie. And the CGI is really bad. Looking back, I was like, oh, this is bad. It's, it's like, I was, it's like, I was almost, I was almost thinking that the uh, father, the father, I was like, was that Jeff Bridges? No, that wasn't Jeff Bridges. It was Nick. It was, it was Nick Nolte. And Nick Nolte Nick Nol- was yeah, Nick coming Nol- off a bad run in his life. Yeah. I, oh God. I just, me and my friends always we used to always quote the Nick Nolte from this freaking movie. Just like, but just take it, take it all. Oh yeah. Oh that 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 climax is so dumb. It doesn't make any sense. And you know, yeah, yeah but then but just like all the scenes with all the flashbacks of like of him just his father just going like just losing his mind trying to like him trying to kill him and, and he accidentally kills the mother and he yeah. gets arrested. I'm just, they like put this psych ward and all this like dude this is like so dark (laughs) i know and i and i i never got the i never got the feeling that that's what's fueling the hulk's rage in that movie i was like Mm -hmm. you have a good setup that that should play more into that but it doesn't i think a lot of that is that ang lee directed that movie which i was shocked to find out years later i was like ang lee Mm -hmm. i was like who watched crouching tiger hidden dragon thought hulk (laughs) yeah so oh yeah the, so like looking at the uh 
critical consensus. It's on the 03 Hulk. It's not great. It's uh, no. like a 60% Rotten Tomatoes, a 5.6 on IMDb, a 54%. Yeah. And not surprising. But. There, I noticed because I follow like the, the Hulk community, like I said, is really s- small, his fan base. And like mm-hmm. I, I do follow them on Reddit and it's not a very active Reddit. But mm-hmm. um, I noticed that there are some people who try to like be like the Snyder fans and just be like claim that a bad movie is good. And, like they're just like, no, the Hulk movie is just misunderstood masterpiece and everything. And that's something I love about the Hulk fan base. They're just like, no, it's not like don't even try. <laughs> It's not good. Like, don't try to make. It's got good scenes. It's got mm-hmm. good ideas, but it's overall, it's not. And the the story that they wasted with the father was, uh, in the comics, his father was abusive to him and him him and his mother, and ends up killing the mom, uh, when she was young because he's like he's a scientist too, and he's really jealous of Bruce Banner that he's taking the attention away from his, uh, that the wife's spending more attention with him, and that is what causes Bruce to have a lot of mental problems when he gets older. And Mm -hmm. he confronts his father when he's an adult at the gravestone of his mother and they get in a fight and Bruce pushes him off and accidentally his father falls and hits his head on the stone and accidentally dies. And Bruce doesn't Hulk out despite how angry he is. Like he should have like any other moment he would have hulked out, but he didn't with his dad. And it, that's interesting it is one of the darkest comic book stories out there and it's not gory it's not over the top violent or anything but just the subject matter and how they handle it i recommend anybody go read it it's a great story i even i just spoiled it for you it's a great story but you know and i guess one positive thing i could say about this movie like the hulk movie is that the ending was cool i really like the ending where he's in brazil and he's kind of like hiding out there and he says the don't make me angry line, which mm. they need. Yeah, one, he's one, of the, one of the biggest things that sticks out about this film when you rewatch it is the comic book aesthetic that they try to do oh, the whole thing with. So bad. Is, yeah, when they just they just, they just, they just have the split screen thing going on throughout all these action scenes. And, just, and then they have like the free, they have like the freeze frames that will transition you from like one shot to the next. I'm just like, it's so it, it, it's it's very distracting after a while when you watch the movie it's like because because it feel it, it it's very gimmicky and it feel it feels out of place for a movie like i said that feels so serious i know it's a hulk movie but it seems so serious and then it's like you got comic book aesthetics that they're just throwing in there i know even as a kid i thought that was dumb um but so to justify us spending so much time talking about a movie that's not even in the MCU, <laughs> it brings us to The Incredible Hulk, which was actually written as a sequel. This was supposed to be the sequel to the 2003 Hulk. Oh, and God. you could tell that because the movie picks up right where that movie left off, even though it's supposed to be a different movie. Yeah, Bruce see, I Ban- didn't even know that because it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. So, like, Bruce Banner's in Brazil in the beginning. Uh, he's been the Hulk for a couple of years. He's on the run trying to find a cure and everything. <laughs> it picks up right where that movie left off, but they did an opening scene in the credits that showed a different origin story to let you know, like, this is a different movie. He's not trying – he doesn't get ex- – he's – instead trying to recreate the the serum that made captain america which is actually even though i don't like the ultimate universe um version of the hulk i think that that's a better origin story of him Mm -hmm. it made more sense to him trying to recreate the the super soldier serum that made captain america but i thought that that was cool that it was just like you could still watch this as a sequel to the other movie so you right. still get that continuation. It's a standalone sequel. I was like, that's a great way to reboot something. You know, kind of do your own thing, but pick up where the last one left off so you don't have to retread so much stuff. I agree. Yeah. And I, when the 2008 Hulk movie came out, I was so disappointed. Like, I was so disappointed by the 2003 movie that I didn't even want to see this movie. I was like, it's probably going to be the more of the same thing. I thought it was a sequel to the other one, but then my dad bought it for me for Christmas on DVD and I watched it and then I watched it again. And then again, mm. to the point that I wore out the CD or the DVD, like I love that movie growing up and it was, I, it, it was the Hulk movie that I always wanted at the time. Like it was a perfect balance of Bruce Banner's problems with the Hulk 
and you know a lot of some really good hulk action a great villain like tim roth as the abomination was great uh william hurt as general ross was great i you know uh betty ross i thought was a lot better done in the movie the cgi still sucked but it was better mm-hmm. um and yeah. the ending blew my mind because that's when i found i was like oh this is what they're doing because the end robert downey jr shows up as iron man or as tony stark oh he does yeah he shows up at the end of the movie to talk to general ross about where the hulk is mm-hmm. and he says we're putting a team together i was like oh my god like i couldn't believe it you know yeah. this is definitely a movie i should go back i should go back and watch because it'll, it'll, it'll honestly feel like the first time i've seen it because it's like i just don't remember it i highly recommend it since especially since she hulk's coming out and they're supposed to bring back a lot of characters that were forgotten in this movie like they set up the leader they set up a lot of other characters that that they never did anything with in the rest of the mcu which is which is sad honestly because i the hulk is such a great part of the marvel universe and like i said like that whole science gone wrong aspect of it and you know the creatures the the villains and everything it's a fun part of the universe that goes to some really dark places that i you know i think that they really wasted it in in the new movies at no fault to mark ruffalo though because i think mark ruffalo is he's a great actor and i think he has the potential to be a really great hulk if they let him go with it oh yeah mark, oh yeah, mark ruffalo is a great when he, when he does his serious films like when he did like dark waters and he did spotlight and stuff like that he's phenomenal yeah uh just pretty much whatever you think of his performance in the Avengers films or any or anything that's just what he was directed to be quite frankly yeah and I really like Edward Norton I think Edward Norton he looks the most like Bruce Banner out of any actor other than Bill Bixby I think he captures that real intensity of it that you know he that he is a genius who is you know got to find his way you know got to think his way out of these situations because he's not a fighter he's not he's just a scientist who's got to you know figure his way out of everything and Mm -hmm. yeah like i the music's great in this movie too it's i think it's really good i think it's really underrated and i wish that it got more attention so i definitely recommend that i i it probably doesn't hold up as well as i remember it because of the nostalgia thing but i still think it's really good and i think it's worth checking out i think i'll I'll definitely watch it soon (laughs) yeah so um on before we talk about the hulk anymore because i'm going about the hulk all day the next one is iron man 2 okay (laughs) Um, i'm trying to remember this movie i've only seen it once and i'm just like god what was this movie about again i remember quite a bit of it um it is a movie that I can watch and enjoy because I am so, because, simply because I enjoy I enjoy the Iron Man films. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this one? Is this one like good? No. Uh, it's very. It's just. It's just, honestly. It's it's just. It's just. It in terms of these MCU films, it's it's very just meh. Yeah. Overall, like like Robert Downey Jr. The fact. Robert Downey Jr. and this character is Iron Man that like, carries the film, mm-hmm. and this this is the film where you have uh, Mickey Rourke as the villain. <laughs> that was wasted. <laughs> yep, and him him and his obsession with his getting his bird and all that, and then his you board. have his board. He wants his board. He wants his board. And then you have Sam Rockwell, who I love oh my as an actor. God, I forgot about him in the movie. He was. Yeah. Uh played justin hammer yeah from hammer corporation See, that's my that's my problem with a lot of the iron man movies is that they brought up a lot of great organizations like a aim the hammer corporation and everything and they just did nothing with them i'm like these are really big entities in the in the comics and they really wasted them yeah and like sam rockwell is such is such a great actor and yeah they, again the it, cast of this movie is great like yeah. i thought one thing i could say uh, but in this movie, he's just like he doesn't do much for me with this yeah. character. His character, his character is just deep sea. He's playing your typical like young, like young CEO type who's yeah. just like who is like just like 
trying like he's trying they're trying they're, he's trying to take control of all these new weapons and all this stuff and he's yeah like, it's he's, just it's he's just, just another corporate what, bad guy he feels like a less yeah. cool version of jeff bridges from the first movie obadiah stain that's the, that's a great way to put it yeah so like i i, I feel like he, they could have done a lot more with this character but i mean it's I, it's mainly because he doesn't have a scene where he says that Tony Stark built this in a cave with a bunch of scraps. Yeah, instead, he, instead he's just like talking to um, Mickey Rourke and a bunch of scenes and like when they're not just when he like doesn't understand them and Mickey Rourke like refuses to talk to him. He's like, "Oh, you want your bird? Oh, we'll get you a bird. Oh, don't don't touch that. Don't do that." And like uh, they have a lot of scenes where they're just like doing nothing together. You know, the only memorable scene from this film that I could, that I could think of is the ending. The ending is fun when you have when you have all the uh, Iron Man's the Iron Man suits that get taken over, and then you get you get to have Iron Man and War Machine have that have the battle together. Mm-hmm. That that in itself is easy, it's easily the best part of the movie. War Machine is one of the best parts of this movie. Yeah. So the end it's like the ending is not bad. Oh, and I'm obviously skipping over something huge with this movie. Uh, Black, the introduction to Black Widow. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we should talk about this since your movie's coming out. Yeah. Uh, her introduction is great scene. It's, it is a great scene. It is She's great scene. in this movie. She's awesome. Yeah, it, it's the scene where she is posing as the assistant, I believe. Uh-huh. And, then, and, uh, and uh, Tony Stark is in the boxing ring with John Favreau. So happy character yeah happy hogan yeah happy hogan and, and and then she she gets in the she gets in the ring with happy and then she and then she just does that with some ridiculous move and takes him down and then tony stark's like well that's a, it's like that's a knockout and he has a whole line with where, where he looks at pepper and he goes i want one <laughs> yeah it's a. Uh... You know, even then, though, I I feel like they underuse her in this movie. I'm just like, why was she in it again? Like, she does she she does play a role in the. I don't I don't remember specific, I don't remember all the details of the climax of the movie, but she does play the role where she, ha- happy takes her somewhere, and she has that whole fight scene in the hallway. She's she's going after something. I don't yeah. I don't quite remember, but she does. But that that is her kind of coming out party where you get to see her just take down a bunch of baddies in the hallway. Yeah. She, you know, but one of the things I was disappointed with with this movie is that, you know, the ending of Iron Man did something that we never really saw before, which was a superhero revealing a secret identity to the world. Mm-hmm. And they kind of do something with this with it in this movie, but at the same time, no. Like, it's... I don't know. It's just... I, for, yeah, for, I don't... Yeah, I don't know if there, there, there were... If there were really many repercussions, of yeah. That. Wait, like the, wait, the only thing is, like oh, the government was trying to take the the Iron Man suit away. Oh, wait, which... oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say there was there was because you have because you have I don't remember the actor's name, but you have the the uh, generals and the senators trying yeah, to get the, a hold of it. Yeah, that one particular senator that even that has the funny line at the end. It's like interesting what a little prick can do, isn't it? <laughs> I know, but that is an interesting detail because that shows how close iron man's technology was is it to falling into hydra's hands because they were all working for hydra it revealed later that that was cool but yeah. that's not that's the movie didn't do anything with that and the the scene where he fights whiplash at the racetrack was awesome uh, yeah that was, that was a great scene yeah that <laughs> scene was good and then the scene where he his father talks to him in that old film mm-hmm. that was a really good scene it's like yeah and yeah and i and i and I, I like how we start off by saying this film wasn't that great, but we now we're talking about a bunch of positive here. I do like, and I do like the scene. I do like the courtroom scenes with Senator Stone and all that. Yeah. With, with them, with them trying to take his weapons away, and he's, and he's like, he's like, you want my weapons? You can't have it. It's like he's like, I have, it's like I have single-handedly solved world peace, and he has that whole scene. Like, yeah. And then the you have Senator Stone going. Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you, I know. Mr. Stark. I was like, it's a great that, that stuff is fun. I it's love a it. great it's a great moment. The the problem is that these are a lot of great moments and scenes spread throughout a boring movie. That's yeah. that's really the, the biggest problem with this movie. Because I remember when it came out, like I saw the trailer and I did I, after loving the first Iron Man movie, I didn't even have any desire to see this. I was just like, eh, whatever. And 
I yeah. finally saw it when Endgame was coming out. I was like, okay, I should finally watch it. And I was just like, yeah, I missed nothing watching yeah. this movie. It's, it's For- It should have come out that early. I thought that should have yeah. came out after Avengers. I was just like, that was way too early for Iron Man 2. Yeah. Pretty much everything that involves Tony Stark's character and, and the uh, situation involving the government trying to take, his, take away his weapons, the stuff with him dealing with the st- issues with his father, all of that stuff is the best part of the movie. The film gets less interesting once we get to, once we get to Justin Hammer and <laughs> and Mickey War- and Mickey Work as the villain, like all their stuff that they have going on is where is the boring stuff. And that's a problem because they are considered the main villains of the film. Right. And so, and that this that brings up MCU's villain problem because ever since it feels like ever since this movie, they've had a villain problem. Yeah. Uh, no, no, yeah, not not really doesn't get resolved until we get to Infinity War. Yeah, it really doesn't. I mean, there's been some some good villains in the meantime, but like it's not consistently though. And mm-hmm. You know, and again, like what really pissed me off about this movie is that the reason I didn't see it, I, I'm just remembering, is because the one Iron Man story I knew that's really that's another really dark story that's very popular is the Demon in the Bottle storyline, where Tony Stark becomes an alcoholic, and it really goes into what being an alcoholic does to you and everything, and it's a great, great Iron Man arc. They teased it that they were going to do that in this movie, and then they didn't, and they teased it again. <laughs> In Iron Man three, and then say, they did. I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like Iron Man three, which Shane Black directing that, which I'm a huge fan of Iron Man three. I actually, I love how personal. I love that deep dive into Tony Stark's character you get with that movie. They really, I feel like they tried to capture his kind of downward spiral. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it probably doesn't go as in depth as you want that, like the story that you're talking about. But I feel like that was kind of their attempt at that. Yeah. The demon in the bottle storyline, it's got that really famous cover of him like staring, like he's like looks awful. He's all sweating and like, you know, unkept and everything with like a bottle of booze sitting next to him. He's just like staring into the mirror while he's holding his Iron Man helmet and everything. Like it's a good storyline. But again, like they, I just don't think Disney, ever since Disney, especially since Disney took over Marvel, I don't think they ever had the guts to do that story. Yeah. You know, or go to that kind of dark place. Yeah. They really, I mean, his character, his character like has the drink like has the party and drinking that you get with iron man 3 but the film more focuses on the ptsd aspect of his character that he's based on he's having the ptsd flashbacks of the events that take place in the 2010 avengers yeah 2010 2012 am i tripping 2012 yeah because i was in i was in junior going into my senior year when that movie came out so yeah i I, i'm in two was 2010 so that's why i got confused yeah so but yeah i think it's uh it's not maybe look up the cool scenes on YouTube, but that's it. You know, I, yeah. I couldn't really, unless you're doing on you want to watch every, be a psycho and watch like every Marvel movie. I can't really recommend it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not terrible, but it, it's for, it's for, it's a forgettable film. Yeah, and this is serious. That's, that's the, the thing about the MCU, at least with their main movies, they never put out anything bad. Like at yeah. their worst, they're just like, man, forgettable. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, so the next one is another movie that I actually skipped and didn't watch until Endgame was coming out when I wanted to like watch like every Marvel movie ever, like a psycho. And that's <laughs> Thor. Um, I like this movie. I thought it was way better than I was expecting. It's like I remember, yeah, I remember seeing Thor in theaters uh, when it first came out, and. Yeah, I remember it being just like I remember just having a good time with it. Like I liked Natalie Portman's character. I thought it was like a it was a salt. It was not. It's not one I've watched a ton since, but I didn't have a negative reaction when I first saw it at all. Yeah, because like I, I knew a little bit about Iron Man. I knew Jack about Thor when that movie yeah, came yeah, out. Yeah, I, just, yeah I, I, I knew nothing about the character. I just knew it was another Marvel movie, part yeah. of this new universe that was just getting started. So All I knew, I was just like, I know he's a god of thunder and he's a member of the Avengers. That's it. You know, again, once in a while shows up in a Hulk comic to fight the Hulk or something. Nothing else. And I, don't, I didn't know who Chris Hemsworth was. I knew who Natalie Portman was because of Star Wars. And so I, did, I, did, I didn't have any interest in seeing it. But then, 
And I, what, what I often forget is that this film was directed by Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> who, who is that? If Kenneth Branagh? Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's, in, he's, in, he's in films like Dunkirk. He, uh, he plays the detective. He played the detective in, um, or, on the Orton Express film that came out a couple years back. Oh, back. him. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, and he played the villain in Tenet recently okay i never even knew that yeah he yeah so i'm a big fan of kenneth Branagh, so that's why i was it's like i didn't realize as I, like, I forget that he directed thor <laughs> it is a well-directed movie like it it's it sells you on thor like it really does like i couldn't think of another way they could have really introduced them because they gave him like you know they moved away from the big city setting they gave him like you know a small desert town you get to meet Loki and everybody in Asgard. Like it was fun. And I, I love Thor's personality of how he, his personality clashed with regular people. Like when he mm-hmm. throws the coffee mug down, I ask him for another cup of coffee and in, uh, in the diner. And then like, he asks them all to like go on this big grand adventure to save the universe with him. And they all look at each other just like, no, he goes like, okay, then. So he just gets up and walk and starts walking away yeah like, that's great i i honestly really liked it so it's like yeah that's what like at the thor movies the first two thor movies tend to be the get a, a bad rap but i think that has to do more with the fact that dark world is definitely the weak one that's and people, like still the worst mcu movie I think. yeah and people tend to lump in this first movie with that because because then because then you have ragnarok after that ragnarok is such a vastly different experience yeah. because because of the different because of the whole new direction they took it. So the people tend to just lump these two movies with Thor and then Thor Dark World together. The first Thor is vastly better than Dark World. It is. It's it's not a bad movie. I I don't yeah. think you know. I don't yeah. think it deserves some of the hate that some people give it. Yeah, no, it's definitely one that I, I want to watch. I want to give it another watch so I can so I can kind of have a more recent take on it but from what i remember about it it's not bad and it, critic and critically it critically it was received okay i mean it has, it's it's rated a seven out of ten it's got a 77 percent rotten tomato score uh yeah so it's not like it, it's not rated terribly like dark world is or anything yeah and out of all of them like out of all the thor movies i i definitely think that this one doesn't hold up as well as like when you look at ragnarok and everything Mm -hmm. but you know again it's it's not terrible you know i I don't think that it's uh you know i think it's a fun watch you know it's definitely something that you should it's not absolutely required but you should check it out you know if you're curious yeah it's like it's it's, i think yeah overall i i feel like it's a solid entry like if obviously if if you're really into the ragnaroks uh style of these films it might not work for you because because it doesn't it's not as flashy and it doesn't have the com the comedy you get of rad rock as much but i mean i think loki is a good loki loki is a good villain and that you get your introduction to him and all that well not introduction because it's after the avengers but yeah, yeah so i think it's a solid entry overall yeah i do too so the next one that we're going to go over is Captain America, the first Avenger, which I think has actually not aged that well, not because it's a bad movie, mm-hmm. but because the second one is just so good. Right. Yeah. I mean, what makes me a bit of a, what makes, makes me a bit of a sucker for this movie is, I, is I'm such a sucker for the world war uh, era. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a period of time I love what I, I love seeing films take place in but I and uh it's, it's a movie that overall it has it has a lot it's got it's got good heart in it and all and all that you get to you get to see Rogers develop his relationship with Peggy you get and you get and you see how the friendship originated with him and Bucky so it, it I think I think it's pretty good but yeah it it's hard to go back to it once you've seen how 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 much better you the film gets once you get to winter soldier and even civil war in some ways yeah and 
you know, to anybody, I would say you do have to watch. You need to watch this movie before watching the other two. Oh, definitely. It really. I didn't think that they were going to pull off because I knew who Captain America was more than any of the other B list or C list heroes that they were going with, other than the Hulk. Uh, so I really knew who Captain America was, and I was just thinking they are not going to be able to pull him off on the big screen. I did see this one when it first came out, just because I was so curious about it. And what they did was really good because they established Captain America in this movie in his purest form. He mm-hmm. is the Captain America that you see in the comics in the 1940s. It's more corny, more sci-fi, you know, really great villain with Hugo weaving as Red Skull, uh, you know, all that cool stuff. And then that's what made it work so well when they throw him into the modern day and they start deconstructing him. You know, that's, sorry, you see that you try to do that with Superman DC. That's how you deconstruct a character. You need to really establish the character in their purest form before throwing them into modern world with modern problems and everything. And that Mm -hmm. movie, the first Avenger does that so well. It's uh, directed by the same guy who did the Rocketeer. So it looks it looks really good. It's I think it's the best looking movie actually out of all the the phase one movies. And yeah, it might be. Yeah, like the special effects are really good. The costume yeah. design's great. Like they they made Cap's costume work so well in this movie. Yeah, I feel like, for some reason I feel like uh, this film really set a lot of groundwork for what we got with. D, the first DC Wonder Woman movie, it like did, lot, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of similarities, and obviously both taking, both take. I can't. I was like, I, I'm, bl- I'm blanking. Did, was this a World War One era or was it World War Two? Wonder Woman was World War One. Captain America was World War Two. Yeah, and which, was, Wonder right. Woman's another great movie. I, I love that movie. So, so yeah, but they like they have so many. There are like so many. Sim- it has a lot. Of, it's very similar in tone at times, and they even they even both have these the very similar scenes. Of how, of, of how Rogers uh, essentially dies at the end, sacrificing yeah. himself in the play, and then Steve Ro- and then Steve Ro- uh, Trevor, uh, Steve Trevor, Trevor, Tre- Steve Trevor, yeah, Steve Trevor sacrifices himself to save. It's like in the in the plane at the end of Wonder Woman. It's, very, it's like right? it's like a lot of similar things I know that I noticed, and I get I feel like both these films being the first of their char- to introduce their characters they both do similar things very well in my opinion oh yeah this is a it really is a, it like i said it's it's sad that it pales in the comparison to the winter soldier so much but it's that doesn't mean it's a bad movie it's really yeah. good because they really get you hooked on the characters that the ending to this movie is such a punch in the gut yeah it that's because hooks you so hard yeah that's because the chemistry with all these characters is it, you buy it immediately. Oh and yeah, that's, and that and it just sets it just sets the groundwork for everything that comes with it with the with the character and like it's essential that they that they made it work and I couldn't have asked for better. Oh yeah, so I I definitely think that this movie does hold up in a lot of departments and everything. Don't think just because a Winter Soldier is to me one of the best superhero movies ever made that that doesn't make this one you know a great movie too. Yeah. Um, you know, it really, it got, this movie got you a hype for Avengers too. I was ready coming out of this movie to see him like lead the Avengers into battle. Right. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to say. Oh, Fox robbed us in this movie because they held the right to the X-Men at the time. In the original script, Magneto was supposed to cameo as a, concentration camp survivor and wolverine was supposed to be a part of captain america's platoon before he got like the the claws and antimanium powers really i have not heard that yeah because uh uh wolverine in the comics is he's like immortal so like uh well he is in the movies too so uh there are a lot of comics that kind of go back and look at him meeting captain america during world war ii and everything because he was in world war ii and they were going to do something similar with that. And unfortunately, we, we didn't get to see that. But anyways, I think this movie holds up very well. I yeah. could not believe how well they were able to nail the Captain America character. And going through like all of his suits 
in the movie they did like the corny one that's like straight out of the comics then they did the more grounded version it was great and that leads us to the avengers which i actually think is aged the worst out of all these movies yeah, shocking to say, but yeah, de- de- I don't. I don't think. There's, I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't think Whedon is a great director. No, and uh, and obviously with the uh, state of Josh Whedon's career right now, yeah, just just puts an even more sour feel on this film. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. It's just like. You know, I didn't blame him really for Justice League going off the rails the way it did because it was just like I think that was just a studio bringing him bringing him in and saying here fix this, right? And but at the same time, I'm just like looking back at the Avengers, I'm just like I love this movie so much when it came out, and then after seeing right. Infinity War, seeing Civil War, and everything, you know, because I saw this movie like three times in the theaters. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it several times. In the yeah, and, and it I was, loved it. And it yeah. was my senior year, and the teachers, it was such a big deal that the teachers, as soon as this came out on Blu-ray, the teachers bought it, and when we were, like, finished up with our assignments at the end of class, they would play it for us, because, like, we were all seniors, and teachers were just like, let's give you a break, let's watch Avengers. Like, that's how mm-hmm. big this movie was. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean... Ah... Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, because I, because like, probably wants to say it felt like when I watched this movie, it felt almost like it had less of a budget, even though right? like, right, it looks cheap. Yeah, even though it's like, I mean, at this point, they're pretty well established with this MCU stuff, so it, obviously they had a huge budget. But when, yeah. when, when, when you watch this compared to Infinity War. Or to be fair, they didn't have Disney money backing them at the time. This was still that, Paramount making these that, movies. That, that that's fair, yeah. but yeah, but yeah, just it, just yeah, the, it, it had a cheap feel, almost television like look to it. That so, it, it feels like a lot. It, it feels like a lot of the stuff we're getting right now with the MCU television series, and which is which is fine for that stuff. Obviously, when, when it comes to the standard you set with a film, you expect a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, just right down, just right you down to the color palette with this. The color this palette movie. is awful. It's it's not good. Yeah, it it's very bright and vibrant, but it has like, yeah, it doesn't really have much of a tone. It looks almost commercial like at times. It does. It looks like that's what it looks. It looks like an NFL commercial, like a Super Bowl yeah. commercial. Yeah, that you would see. It's, it's a very it's a very plain yet vibrant color palette that you would see in a commercial. It, it does not. It doesn't, it doesn't look that. like a movie. Yeah, it doesn't have a cinematic appeal to it, yeah. which is that's something clear. As I, like, I don't know. That's obviously something I didn't pay as much attention to in 2012. Because we're teenagers. Yeah, but I, it it sticks out immediately when I watch this movie. Oh, it's so bad looking. This movie, and but on the other hand, you know, you got like the Hulk looks better than i think he's ever have in this movie the hulk looks great this might be one of the stronger periods of hulk as a character though yeah they i had no problem they wrote it in such a way that i had no problem going from edward norton to mark ruffalo in this movie i was like that's the same character this this is is like a natural arc to go from that movie to this yeah because in this film, I believe it's Black Widow that goes and tracks him down and all that. Yeah, and, and they find finds him in isolation and all that. Yeah, and, and yeah, and Hulk and Hulk has some of the best scenes in this yeah. whole movie. The scene where she she thinks that she has him pegged and he like yells at her to stop lying to me. That whole theater yeah. that I went was just dead, like gasped when he did that because yeah. like you have that feeling that he's he's gonna come out. I think that he's like the best part of the movie because he plays it in a way that nor he plays it different from Norton to where he's just like, he's trying to desperately remain calm and keep his peace. He doesn't want to unleash the Hulk in this movie. And yeah. he's just like, I just want, at this point, I'm even trying to find a cure. I just want to be left alone. Like, don't drag me into your problems. And God, I miss that version of the Hulk. Yeah. And so it's, yeah. He, he, he 
Yeah, they like they keep his character like they, this is the most serious I think you get Mark Ruffalo's Hulk yet. Obviously, one of the most famous scenes is the is just the Hulk smashing Loki. <laughs> oh, that's but it's it, good. It works it, so well. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. It was one of the fun. Yeah. It was it's it's one of the funny moments of the movie for me that I will never forget because I was one of the fun. The theater just cracking up. Yeah, was, like like crazy. So, I, just thinking about the ending of this movie where you get the giant battle in New York. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like this was like, was this like a trend? Because I feel like this was around the same time that I don't remember which which movie it was, but Transformers yes had, had a very similar type ending where it was a giant battle in New York City with the with these robot type alien things. Well, obviously it's Transformers, it's, it's Transformers and yeah. those movies. But the but just the same type of deal happening. I am so happy you brought that up because like every single video review I remember at the time, this was back in like the Doug Walker nostalgia critic days when they were all like they were the ones who ruled the internet, like uh, you know, the angry video game nerd and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, every single review said Michael Bay should have directed this movie because it mm -hmm. felt like the end of Transformers, and that really was like it. The ending battle is. It's a lot of fun. It's really well laid out. It's well mm -hmm. shot. It gives everybody something to do, even somebody like Black Widow and and uh, and uh, Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. But it has that mid two two thousands feel of just like, yeah, this feels like Transformers and every other giant action movie at the time. Yeah, I just remember like thinking about. See, th like thinking back on those movies and then realizing, I'm, I was like, I think I'm thinking of Transformers actually. Yeah. And we all know how well the Transformers movie holds, movies hold up. <sighs> I mean, from what I remember, I mean, the first one's fine, I guess, but then after the second one that is, it's get, literally only the first one. Like, yeah. it still blows my mind. I'm like, really? It's only the first movie? Yeah, those movies went downhill really quick. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and I was, I remember. I really liked that. I felt like they really redeemed Black Widow and and from like Iron Man two. I really like what they did with Mark Ruffalo as a Hulk. I just remember being really just disappointed by Captain America in the movie. I'm just like, it feels that, like there's a lot missing with him in this that's movie. A, that's the one that aged the worst. Yeah, the character that definitely aged the worst going back and revisiting. Yeah, especially uh, that costume. They, they even yeah, make fun yeah, of that yeah, costume in Endgame. Yeah, the costume's not great. Yeah. Um, Although it does make sense that like Phil Coulson designed it and he's like a fanboy. I'm just like, okay, I'll I'll give it that. But so yeah, you have like like there's certain like there's certain things that still work. Like like all you have all the conflict already kind of being established with, between Tony Stark and Captain America and all that. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a conflict among all of them. And all, yeah. and all and all that's kind of interesting to go back and revisit and see how that all went on. But yeah, I don't know. Just like, it's just something, there's something about it. It just doesn't work I know. for me anymore. It just doesn't hold up anymore. And it's like, but there's so many cool scenes. Like, you know, the, yeah. the scene where like Cap first meets Iron Man and he just goes, Mr. Stark and Iron Man turns and goes, Captain. That was awesome. Yeah. You know? It's like it, yeah, like it's a movie that still has its moments, but like I said, it's just like I can't. Sh there's something I can't shake about that. Where I'm just like, that Loki versus Captain America scene is awful. <laughs> that fight does not hold up it's, at all. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty bad. Like the face, the faces that Chris Evans makes as he's all, as he's throwing the shield and everything, and the way it's shot. I'm just like, really? Like that? That was the scene that made me realize. I'm just like, I don't think Josh Whedon's a very good director. So yeah, like this is just kind of on a side note. Like people often say, like Age of Ultron, they always establish that as the worst of the Avengers films. I, I highly disagree. Oh yeah, I've, I think that movie's so much better. I've, than... I, I've come back, I've come back and revisited Age of Ultron. It holds up far better. Oh yeah, than this one, than this yeah. first film does. Any problem that that movie does have, which it does have some problems, I don't blame on Joss Whedon because he was like under immense pressure. To, he had to set up civil war. He had oh, to yeah. set up like so not, much stuff for yeah. that movie. I'm so not I'm just calling. Like, I'm not calling this a bad movie because I think that's yeah. unfair. It because at the time nobody called it that. We all no. thought it was great. 
it's it's just because things have changed and what in our we've expectations been spoiled with yeah. the movies we've gotten from marvel yeah so it's not i'm not i would never i'm not i would never say this is a bad movie i just it's what it does it hasn't aged great yeah but that's but that it's just that's just the way it's come out quite frankly yeah. but it's i don't i'm not gonna hold it against the movie and they did nothing with hawkeye i remember in this movie like even when this movie came out it's like well, what are, who's hawkeye right you know and then uh what was the other things that I was uh um Loki was great. I remember always liking Loki. Yeah, Loki yeah, Loki, Loki was Loki's definitely a strong villain for sure. Yeah. But uh yeah, I I out of I'm shocked to say that like out of all of phase one, like when I say it does phase one hold up. This is the movie I'm mainly talking about because this movie surprisingly does not doesn't hold up that well yeah it, yeah i just remember going back and watching this movie and then when i came to the realization i was just like this is not what i remembered it being yeah and i felt like i was I like i thought i was going to be in the minority with that but then like over the past few years because I, I came to that realization a few years ago when i yeah. watched it and i think more and more people started to come around to the fact that it's like yeah it it it, it it's it's so different it's, it's so much different than you remember it yeah once and you go back and revisit it whoever did the cinematography on that movie deserves to be fired <laughs> you know it's bad uh, uh it's yeah we yeah this just yeah the standard we've now set with these more recent avengers films it's like it's hard it's hard to, yeah to infinity be- war like to me, Infinity War is like the best comic book movie ever made. Like, I know people are still going to say The Dark Knight. I'm just like, yeah, well, The Dark Knight gets pushed to number two. I'm sorry. I still love yeah. The Dark Knight, but. And yeah. Then, and however you feel about Infinity War and Endgame as films, like, just the look, just the look of these movies is just. Uh, you can't, yeah, you this, can't deny their works of art. The cinematography is just so good in the, in the newer ones. And. Yeah, this movie just feels like really cheap. It, it's very bland. It, it's, exactly, it's yeah. bland. It, there's nothing special about it. Um, what really saves the movie is the characters, I think. And even then, yeah. like I don't think they did the characters. Captain America didn't start getting awesome till Winter Soldier. You know, yeah, he was good. At, I I liked him a lot in First Avenger, but this movie did him no didn't really do him a lot of favors. Yeah, Winter um, Soldier. I, Winter Soldier is where we finally get to have yeah. more depth in his character so yeah I and I, I think a lot of that has to do with there's a lot of scenes that are cut from this movie i heard like i know that there was like a like over like four hours of footage they cut from from the first avengers movie so i'm wondering if like you know we'll ever oh god i can't believe i'm saying this because i i hate the whole like release the director's cut shit that's going on now with everything right but It'd be interesting to see an extended cut. <laughs> it's one of those movies. It's one obviously it was because it came out at a time before this was kind of a thing. Yeah. I feel like if there was any movie that would do that, it would have been the Avengers. But like I said, if it had come out today, no doubt what in my mind they would have like they would have released like an extended an extended yeah. cut. I think the reason why they don't do that with any of these movies is because people like actually like them when they come out. Right. <laughs> like nobody like hates them to say there's got to be a different version or whatever. I've actually heard people argue that they thought that the Thanos at the end credits of this movie was better than uh, uh, Josh Brolin and everything. I'm just like, guys, he's on screen for like two seconds. I and know. You, don't, you see like barely like the grin on his face and that's it. Yeah, it's uh that, I feel like people, that's just people going for the for the hot take i know the hot <laughs> take is so stupid but yeah. i don't think that we're saying anything controversial here when we say that like this this movie doesn't hold up <laughs> no really like i said it's it, 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 it's a good movie and i'm not it's it, i don't know <laughs> yeah so. it's hard it's, it's hard for me to go back and rewatch it it definitely is like i can go back and watch the first iron man and the first uh you know the incredible hulk and and the first avenger with like nothing um mm-hmm. takes a little bit more for me to watch like thor 
but like Thor's good. Like I, like I said, you know, and yeah. Iron Man two, I just I'll watch the race car fight and that's it. <laughs> yeah, de- yeah, definitely agree. <laughs> yeah, but I think that that just brings us to overall. Do you think that Phase One holds up? I think yeah. I think overall, in general, it's it's solid. It's still pretty solid. It's the event. It's like sadly, it's the it's the culmination of the entire phase one at the end with the Avengers that tears it down. Because the only because even as, as weak, you because even as weak as Iron Man two is, like we said at times, it doesn't bother me as much to rewatch this as much as. I, the Avengers. The Avengers. It's it just sticks out to me as a, as a film that I just don't I, I don't like rewatching it because it just bug, it bothers me. Yeah, and you're a, you're a film buff first and yeah. foremost. Like you know you yeah. work in film. You you know you work editing, making movies, doing cinematography, and everything. So this is like you know for you to say that like you know, and I 100% agree with you. You know, it's it's like yeah, it's like. I think I think most most of these movies were solid starts to introduce these characters, so I would say overall these films still hold up pretty well. Obviously, yeah. could it could be better, but not like not too bad considering how far removed we've been. Like we're looking at like 12, 12 13 years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I and I agree. I think that they're all for the most part, still solid movies. Um, like I said, I, I have no problem going back and checking out a few, but mm. I, I'm still, I'm still surprised at how bad the Avengers <laughs> aged. Yeah. Like I just like off the top of your head, you would not expect it, yeah. it to be the one that like it, 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 it's like, it's the worst it's, and it's not close. That's the that's that's the most shocking thing. It sticks out as easily the one that's aged the worst. Oh yeah, like there's a, like Age of Ultron. You can nitpick that movie, but at the end of the day, it's still. I still think it's. We're watching it like this is miles better than the Avengers. Like I cannot believe when Age of Ultron came out. You know, we'll get to that movie when we go over Phase Two eventually. Mm. I cannot believe how people picked that movie apart and said it was awful and everything and like i went back and watched it a couple of times like yeah was, we were so wrong that we were just like it's not as good as the first one i'm just like are you shitting me it's like yeah because i remember when they released the avengers films a few years back like on 4k and i went i i i the only one i was missing oh was i can only Age imagine how this looks at four, how the first avengers looks in 4k uh yeah, I, I'm actually. Oh God, I should. It's on Disney Plus. I should go check it out and see how it looks on that. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, I was like, I didn't own Age of Ultron, so I went and got it on 4K and I watched it and I was like, I really like this actually. And I'm like, but I was like, which was really, like, I was like, the general consensus is I'm not supposed to like this one. It's because everyone says it's the worst. And I was like, I don't think it is. No, I think James Spader carries that movie yeah is the thing you know and um but yeah i i'm still surprised at the fact that the avengers is aged the worst out of all of them you know i was always expecting it to be something like thor or captain america and everything but it you know i actually think that i think that the first thor movie and the first avenger movie and the first iron man movie have only gotten better with time yeah no you doubt know? Because those are movies where I'm just like, it is fun to go back and look at where we came from. Avengers is not like that for me. Yeah. You know, uh. so. Um, and I think The Incredible Hulk is finally, like, there's all, ever since, like, you know, I think it's sad that the, I think most of the reason people are going to see The Legend of Shang, or Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings is just because the Abomination is going to be in it. And he, we haven't <laughs> seen him since The Incredible Hulk, but you know, I think ever since She Hulk got announced, and that a lot of people were disappointed with Professor Hulk, that the Incredible Hulk is finally getting the respect that it deserves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't even hate Professor Hulk. Like I, I, I had no problem with them going with Professor Hulk. I was just like, you needed a movie though to get him there. You, you, you can't do that stuff off screen. But that's another topic. You know, again with the Hulk. So 
Yeah, I definitely look forward to go re- rewatching the Hulk and seeing what I think about it now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it made me appreciate the newer movies even more. So, mm-hmm. do you have anything else? Uh, any other thoughts, Joseph? Before we wrap this up? No, I think we covered everything pretty well. Yeah, I uh, I think so too. Um, so, Joseph, uh, where can we reach you, and what are some of the things you've been working on lately? As we close this out. Well, I'm it's like well, I've currently been working on a lot of side projects with with all my other jobs. But you can always look me up at my Hoop Studios YouTube channel, where pretty much I it's where I post all my passion projects and all the stuff I like to make for fun. A lot of James Bond content, basketball content. When I get to it, uh, just I like to make trailers, promos, stuff like that. So it's basically just kind of where I get to experiment with all my editing work. So. If you enjoy if you enjoy that kind of thing, feel free to look me up. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well, where if you if you want to deal with basketball talk or me or just hear me talk about James Bond with a bunch of people, you can look me up at Joseph Thomas Four on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of James Bond, we do in the future when the new movie comes out, I do want to do an episode uh, where we debate who is the best James Bond, and you will definitely be on that one. Oh yeah, if if I don't sound educated enough for these for these podcasts, you guys will get the best version of me with those. <laughs> I won't tell you that right now. Yes, you bleed <laughs> James Bond. You live and breathe James Bond. Um, As you can tell by my virtual background here. <laughs> yes, for those who are watching on YouTube. So awesome. Um, I'm glad that we finally got to do another episode. Uh, hopefully we're going to be having some more episodes coming out soon for the Third Planet podcast. Um uh, we're looking forward to this Black Widow. Uh, so be on the lookout for a review of that coming out this week. Um, we also have some other cool projects coming out, more videos, but uh, there is always going to be something posted at least a couple times a week on the Third Planet uh, website, which is www.thirdplanet.news, where we post uh, different articles and things like that covering all aspects of geek culture and be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You could also find me at, uh, you can look me up on Linktree, dbenson3, which has all of my uh, links to my Twitch channel, which is dbenson3 underscore on Twitter. I'm dbenson3 underscore on Instagram. I'm dbenson3. You can find me on all those places. Um, also, be sure to check out Apollo City Comics podcast and Sucho Side Talk podcast. Uh, I do contribute to those once in a while, so make sure you uh, check that out. And... Remember, guys, we waste our money so you don't have to. And we'll see you next time. Reporting live from the third planet, from the black hole. It's the astro floating through the astral. Plane I maintain, this wisdom, I'm the vassal. Yeah. Baby, I'm just burying these rappers like a time capsule. Let my mind travel through dimensions. Check this pimping. I'm just trying to find a piece like Olimar.